Hello and welcome to ModB.com's Stanislaw Football Weekly, an inside look at all things football in the Modesto area. And now for your hosts, Joe Cortez and Brian Vanderbeek. Hi everybody and welcome to Stanislaw Football Weekly. I'm Brian Vanderbeek and this is, this is Joe Cortez. And uh, we'll be here every week talking about uh, what happens in high school football in the Stanislaw District. And right off the bat, we've got to talk about some Week Zero stuff. And, uh, yes, we do. A really, really nice start for the MMC. MMC went 5-2 and two with uh, big wins from Davis, Downey, Byer, uh, Grigori, and Modesto High. Um, the only two teams that didn't win, of course, were Enox and... Johansson. Johansson. And they both lost pretty big. Yeah, Gregory opens with a big stadium dedication room. That's right. They dedicated Don Lanfear Stadium. Uh, named after the long-time Davis High coach. Mm. 15 years at Davis High. Ultra successful. And uh, one of the really good guys yes. in uh, the, the district's history. Yeah. Um, Modesto also opened up with a big win against Ceres. And uh, both teams had a lot of offense in that game. They do. They, they have a lot of offense. We're not sure about the defenses. That's right. Uh, but Modesto won 74 to, 14, uh, 74 to 41, and, and both teams just went nuts offensively. Modesto yeah. uh, got a big performance from quarterback Tiki Tonga, threw for 216 yards, rushed for over 100, I think it was 122. Um, and uh, their running back, Antonio Perez, ran for 250 yards, mm -hmm. scored four TDs. And then on the other side, uh, series quarterback, Brad Bussard threw for 437 yards, completed 27 of 44, mm -hmm. uh, six touchdown passes, so offense galore. Yeah, also a nice opening win for Davis over East Union. Again, talking about teams here we're really not sure about, but... But, uh, but they're nice victories. Absolutely. You know, uh, no question. It's nice to get off to a good start, and Davis did that with a 26-13 win over East Union. Uh, Zach Magana uh, had a nice debut on the varsity level, uh, completed uh, two-thirds of his passes for 333 yards, three TDs. So, uh, he, you know, he looks like a nice all-around player, uh, yeah. ran for a touchdown. Also a huge opening week victory for Bayer over, over our West team. We're not, again, not sure how, how good West is, but Bayer putting up 57 points in the first week is very impressive. Like you mentioned earlier today yeah. in the office, uh, West is usually a very athletic team. Mm -hmm. Buyer comes in and beats them 57 to 19. That was uh, an impressive victory. Jay Green, mm -hmm. uh, who played on the freshman level last year, gets called up to the varsity and has 100 yards in his first varsity mm -hmm. start. Uh, Downey got a nice win against Golden Valley. Now Golden Valley was was picked to finish last in the CCC, but in case you're worried that Downey wasn't going to be able to score points after Aaron Zwallen graduates, they put up uh, 42 in the opener. Beat Golden Valley 42-39. Had to get a late interception from Josh Lowe, who returned mm -hmm. for a touchdown, mm -hmm. to pull out the victory. But they did it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. They still score. Spo they still score points at <laughs> down. That's right. And the two uh, CCT, C excuse me, two MMC teams that lost. Uh, Johansson. That's a tough opener. Patterson, very physical. Gonna. That's a program over there that's going to be physical and tough every year. Joho loses 45 nothing. And then Enox lost to a very very good Pittman team, 68 eight. It's the first outside contact that Enix has had. They didn't get to scrimmage yeah. because of the services scheduled for uh, August 24th, the day of their scrimmage, yeah. for Kalen Carter, who passed yeah. away on August 16th. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yes, it was their first contact. It was really their scrimmage, and uh, it, it looked like it. They, they were, I think, emotionally spent, and uh, they just you know, weren't as prepared as Pittman. And yeah. make no mistake, Pittman's a very good team. Yes. They're going to be very good. Yeah. And perhaps our game of the week, arguably, uh, Oakdale Turlock, that's always a great opener. Uh, and Turlock pulling out the victory against last year's uh, Division Three Bowl team, that's pretty good. Yeah, 21-20. What do they say? Can't get any closer than that? Can't get any closer than that. Uh, it's the first game I've covered in about 12 years, <laughs> and uh, it, it was a good one. Uh, you know, Turlock proved they're going to be a good team. I can't wait for the Harvest Bowl this year. Yeah, that'll be really good. Really good. Oakdale's going to be very good. They get better all the time. We'll talk a little bit more about that when we talk about this week's games coming up. Uh, individually, uh, Manteca High's Alex Laurel. Talk about a nice debut, huh? Yeah, right out of the bat, uh, right out of the gate, right off the bat. He takes the opening kickoff of the season, 92 yards for a touchdown. The next time he touches the ball, 
He returns a punt, 48 yards for a touchdown. Mm -hmm. The next time he touches the ball, he takes a punt, 57 yards for a touchdown. Not a bad way to start the season. Maybe they should get him ball, the ball a little bit more. <laughs> well, they did. Yeah. yeah. The, <laughs> I think his sixth touch yeah. of the season resulted in a long touchdown as well. Jeez. Uh, Central Catholic, you got to mention them. I, I covered the Central Catholic Placer game last year when Placer brought uh, that great team with Eddie Vanderdose down here to Modesto to play Central and, and beat them. Actually handled them pretty good in that opener. Of course, Central goes on to win the state uh, uh, small schools bowl championship and, and uh, in a very impressive. But even more impressive, Central going up the hill to Auburn right. and smacking going Placer. Going on the road. Placer pretty care good. Of business. Yeah. And uh, Matt Ringer comes through with a big performance. 187 yards, four TDs. Uh, you know, he rushed for about 700 yards last year. Right. Oh, nobody knew it. Uh, had the Raiders. The Raiders. The right. The quietest 700 yards you ever heard of. But uh, he's gonna he's gonna do big things this year. Speaking of running backs, uh, the two running backs we're we're watching this year with a chance to break uh, cent the the record of Central Catholic back Lewis Bland, uh, Jaquan Jaquan Gardner, Jaquan Gardner at uh, Central, Central Valley. Valley. Had a pretty good opener, not a great opener, but a pretty good opener. Well, he faced a really big, physical Manteca team, mm -hmm. and uh, you know that was going to be a real challenge game for him. He rushed for 125 yards. Yeah, you know that's nothing to sneeze at. But you know this record is out there, and to get it, he needs to average about 160 yards through the 10-game regular season. Yeah. And uh, so he's a little off pace, but uh, you know this is a kid who's rushed for 397 yards in a single game. That's right. Well, the other back that had a chance at the record, unfortunately, it doesn't look like Stephen Machado at Oris Dimba is going to get a chance now. He had a tweaked hamstring coming into the season, and uh, I guess he really just about finished it off during warm-ups for uh, his week, uh, week zero game against the Grand. Um, I'm hearing that he may be out for a an extended period of time. Uh, that's too bad. Nice young man and, and a terrific program over there at Oris Stemba. Well, that's it for week zero. Now we're going to talk a little bit about week one, which is always strange to me. Why would they right, start right. with week But zero. week zero, not everybody's playing. Week one, we pretty much have everybody, everybody going. Let's talk about just some of the big games coming up this week, and it just never gets bigger around here than the Holy Bowl. Central Catholic, St. Mary's. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think that was our first clue last year that Central yes. was going to be something special when mm -hmm. they defeated St. Mary's. A St. Mary's team that played De La Salle close. closer than anybody yeah. in the state last year. Lost to them by, I believe, six points. Yeah, it was close. It was close. It was close late in that game, and, uh, right. and Central Catholic went there after losing to Placer and, and handled them pretty good. I've covered a lot of Holy Bowls in the past. Always a great atmosphere. This year it's up at St. Mary's. Uh, get there early if you want to park. Yeah, uh, you're parking out in front of the school and walking back. It's a great atmosphere, great food. Really? really? Oh, yeah. What St. do they serve? St. Mary's does it well. They do the whole, the whole thing out there, the, the tri-tip, the sausage, and you eat well at these games. You want to trade games? <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Another game we're looking at pretty closely here is the, the Merced-Downey game. They're both coming off, off big wins. Uh, Merced got a, a win on a, a missed extra point against Clovis West. Of course, Clovis West is coached by Mike Parsons. He used to be the coach at uh, Modesto Christian when they won the state bowl. Uh, but a big win for, for Merced, and like we mentioned, a big early win for Downey. That's right. Uh, Clovis West ties it up on the last play of the game, misses the extra point. Mm -hmm. So Merced gets out of there by the skin of their teeth. So it's a step up in class for Downey. Uh, mm -hmm. Merced figures to be one of the players in the CCC, so it will be a good test for Downey. Yeah. Another game we're looking at, mainly because it's a chance for these schools to get an early win, uh, Johansson at Livingston, interesting game. Uh, Johansson, of course, got blanked by Patterson, like, like we mentioned. And Livingston got thumped, too. They lost 43-7 uh, to, seven to uh, I guess, their nearest school, their nearest rival, which would be Hillmar. That's about six miles there. Yeah, this is, this is, a, this is a big week for Johansson. You know, uh, mm -hmm. Grand Genesee said that they had, some, uh, you know, they had some tough breaks in that game mm -hmm. uh, last week. They had a uh, pick six returned. They had a fumble returned for a touchdown. They had a fumble on a kickoff that was returned to the one and eventually mm -hmm. led to a touchdown. So, uh, you know, if they can clean up those kind of silly mistakes, they're a little more competitive. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's 45 points is a lot to make <laughs> up. But. That's right. Another interesting game, too, uh, Turlock coming off that big home win against, uh, against Oakdale. 
goes up the hill to face Sonora. Now, this is an interesting game for Sonora. They didn't play last week, but not only did they not play, but Sonora coach Brian Craig has had to, been create, had to be creative up there just to find his team a place to practice. That school was closed for a while because right. of the smoke. They practiced indoors. So this is our first chance to see a Sonora team that some of the, uh, the Valley Oak League coaches picked as their sleeper. Yeah, that's a really tough opening assignment coming, out, yeah. coming against a Turlock team that's uh, you know, battle-tested against Oakdale. Mm -hmm. That other side of the Turlock opener, of course, was Oakdale, which, which is coming off a loss. Now, going into the season, I actually told some people this. I really thought that of Oakdale's three non-league games, uh, the Turlock game was actually the easiest. Not to say Turlock was easy by any right. means, but they turn, they turn around this week and they host Enterprise up in the Chico area. And then next week they, they face a very tough Southern California power in Paraclete. Paraclete, which lost its opener. Yeah. And they were ranked number 19th in the nation by Max Preps. In small schools. In small schools division. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's, a, that's a test, obviously. Uh, Enterprise from Reading. You may be right. Yeah. Turlock may have been the easiest of the three. Yeah, so we'll see what happens there. Well, time for some picks. Ready to go for some picks here? Let's do it. Okay. Central at St. Mary's. I'm going to go with Central. Yeah. Yeah. It's my wife's alma mater. That's the reason? <laughs> That's no, the reason? I think, uh, <laughs> I, I think their running game is, is still very stout uh, with Ringer and uh, Reggie Bland yeah. and uh, Donovan Townsend, I think, uh, adds an element to that team. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to go ahead. You know, Caleb Parrish is a wonderful quarterback, and uh, he will present problems for the Raiders, but I'm mm -hmm. going to go with Central. Unless she's playing running back or something. I didn't see how that your wife's alma mater made i got to live with her beat. That's true. That's true. I also go with Central. I also go with Central. They won it last year, and I, I think this is as, as special as last year's Central team was with the Ray and Ray show and, and the balance they had. This year's team is going to have even more balance, mm -hmm. be able to come at you in a bunch of different ways. Uh, speaking of alma, alma maters, Merced at Downey. Well, i got to go with my alma mater, right? Merced That's right. I. That's right. I, I'm going to go with Merced. Uh, like I said earlier, it's a step up in class for Downey. Mm -hmm. uh, Merced has a wonderful quarterback, Tyrone Williams. Uh, he's kind of a Colin Kaepernickish guy. You know, throws, he runs, he beats you with his legs. Uh, I'm going to go with the Bears. Yeah, I, I picked against Downey so many times last year, and it, it always burned me. So, the, Jeremy, this one's for you. I'm, going, I'm, picking, I'm picking Downey in this one. Uh, Tur, Turlock at Sonora. I'm going to go with Turlock. Like we said, it's a tough, it's a tough opener yeah. against a battle-tested Turlock team. Turlock looks really good. Like I said, Pittman's going to be good. Turlock's looking good. It's going to be a great Harvest Bowl this year. I like the Bulldogs. Yeah, d despite all the emotion of the opener at Sonora going into their last year in the Valley Oak League, uh, I I I'm going with Turlock in this one also. Enterprise at Oakdale. Oakdale doesn't seem to lose much yeah. at the Corral. Yeah. Um, you know, for 36 minutes in that opener last week, I thought Oakdale was the better team. You mm -hmm. know, they looked uh, better conditioned, uh, better prepared. Turlock got a break or two in the fourth quarter and then kind of leaned on Oakdale with its size. Uh, I like Oakdale, yeah. especially at the Corral. Yeah, I like Oakdale in the Corral, and, and uh, again, just the food bowl. You've got to get to an Oakdale game for the tri-tip. It's, it's the best round. I will. And, and the central people argue with me about it, but different process there, and <laughs> Oakdale's is really, is really better. And the last game we're picking is Rippin at Linden, and speaking of alma maters, I'll take this one. Uh, Rip, Rippin high grad. Uh, go Indians, and, and, and they'll handle Linden this week. I think, I think they will. I think it's a step up in class for Linden. And uh, Rippon hasn't lost a regular season game since 2011. So yeah. I'm picking the Indians. Yeah, there we go. Well, that's it for this week's edition of Stanislaw Football Weekly. Uh, for Joe Cortez, I'm Brian Vanderbeek. Hey, go out and see some high school football.